Brown seemed fed up with television when she quit after a 15-year career with NBC and CNN. She's just launched a news site to push education reform called the 74million.org. But is it news? I spoke to her earlier from New York. Campbell Brown, welcome. Hey, it's great to be here. It's good to see you. I wish I was in person. Me too. Let's start with your decision five years ago to leave a primetime CNN show. You said that you just couldn't compete in the ratings against Bill O'Reilly and at the time Keith Oldman. Was that frustrating for you? Of course it was. Um, I, you know, I, life is an evolution, and I think my career in television certainly was. And and I loved very much being a reporter. And what I think I struggled with when I became an anchor, and certainly when I was doing the show at CNN, was how ratings driven it was, and you know how it's almost impossible to not get caught up in that. I remember my staff looking at the ratings every day when they come out at four uh -huh. o'clock, and and being either demoralized or so excited based on that number. And it's it's almost impossible for that number sometimes to, to not drive editorial decisions. And, and that was frustrating. That sort of took the joy out of doing journalism. And do you think that's produced a very polarized environment in cable news? Well, I think it, it pushes you to do things that that you know aren't very you know worthwhile or beneficial. More generally, you know, we end up covering a lot more um, celebrity scandal or crime than than is necessary or we should be because it gets it gets a pop. You know, it makes the ratings go up. You know, the shouting matches always give you a boost, and so people drive us toward more you know confrontational style interviews, and you don't get the opportunity to be as thoughtful. In that um, case, let me look. shout at you. Let me shout this next question at you. <laughs> you spent much yes. of your career at NBC. You were the top uh, substitute on NBC Nightly News. Do you think the network was tarnished by the whole Brian Williams mess? Well, look, I have so many friends there because I worked there for 11 years, and so it was heartbreaking to you know for me to talk to them because it was so hard what they were going through. Um, but no, it, over the long run, there are great journalists there. I mean, Lester Holt, who has taken over Nightly News, uh, was my co-anchor on Weekend Today for a very long time. He is, you know, an, an outstanding journalist and a dear, dear friend and an amazing person. And so putting him in that role, I think, will quiet things down and stabilize the ship, so to speak. Right. They couldn't have made a better choice, and now, so I think people are moving on already. Now that you've dived into education reform, you've started this website, do you feel liberated from the constraints of journalism? Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> How does that feel, think, Campbell? Um, it feels great, and I think more people should try it. You know, I've been having this debate with a lot of people around this new role I've taken because uh, prior to launching the 74, I was working more on the advocacy side around education issues, and so I get asked a lot, are you an advocate now, are you a journalist? And I have found, you know, having come from that sort of old school journalism background where I was hired by Tim Russert and mentored by Tom Brokaw, uh, and we were very much of the mindset that, you know, there are two sides to every story and the reporter's role is essentially to play referee whereas now I feel like journalism we, we've we've lost a lot of credibility with the audience over the years and they don't really believe that we can be truly objective and I frankly don't believe you know that's really possible we all come to every story with our own life experience which creates a, a certain bias for us all and maybe it's better to be honest about your bias and your positions and, and the opinions you have when you go into a story. And, and if we were, I, I think that could go a long way to restoring our credibility with the audience who doesn't buy the objectivity line anyway. Well, I mean, one of the stories on your website, you're hiring journalists for this site. Uh, you say, no one knows how Hillary Clinton will govern on education. The American Federation of Teachers is endorsing her anyway, and you've clashed with the teachers' union. But you also write that you've learned, you say, I've learned that not every story has two sides. Is that really true, or is that more of an advocate's point of view? 
No, I'll give you an example, and it was the story that brought me into education as an issue that I became very passionate about in the first place. And I, it was a story I read in the Daily News about these you know, 14 teachers who had been found guilty of sexual misconduct with kids who kept their jobs. I mean, who could argue that that's a good thing? Right. And that exists, that problem, because of a law in the books here in New York that protects those teachers and prevents them from being removed from the classroom. In my mind, that's crazy, and, and it's impossible for anyone to argue that that's okay. And yet, when I wrote something about that or, or spoke up about it, you know, there is a special interest group with a lot of power in this country, and they went crazy. Sometimes in journalism, we defer, um, and we're afraid to take positions when we see situations like that, and I think that false equivalency really hurts us in our credibility, and that when there is a clear moral issue at stake, we should speak out about it, especially when it involves children. Well, you're certainly speaking out now, and a lot of people think journalists should be more open about their bias, and now you have the opportunity to, uh, to push your cause. Campbell Brown, thanks very much for joining us. It's great to be here. Good to see you.